Hello, my name is Randy Scrapper. I'm here along with Anne-Marie Duffy, and we are product success architects here at ServiceNow. Today, we're gonna show you how to configure the new SC SG SCCM plugin for both Ham and Sam. First, we'll talk about some use cases. We'll show you how to request the plugin from the application manager, and then we'll go through the guided setup. Here are some documented use cases around the Service Graph connector. Increasing your visibility, the ability to do ITSM incident problem change, as well as tightening your integrations and accuracy around HAM and SAM. Some of the CI types that are discovered would be bringing in the computer, the disk, some of the configuration items, the network adapters, as well as the software packages and software usage. The SCCM Service Graph Connector does support multi-SCCM instances. We do recommend using the guided setup. When requesting the plugin, navigate over to the Navigation Manager under Plugins, find the Service Graph Connector for Microsoft SCCM, and install it from there. When the plugin gets installed, there are three other applications that are installed as well to help it do its job. I do want to call out, it does have a dependency to make sure that it has a mid server set up, a mid server, and we do highly recommend using the guided setup to make sure SCCM is configured properly and bringing in all the right information. Emery. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, Randy. Yep. So, um, so here, SCCM has already been installed in my Washington instance. So, once you have SCCM installed, you just type SCCM, and you see here um, there's a, a setup option that you click on, and this brings you to guided setup. Okay. So you just click on get started, and this first step is about configuring data source access, changing the permissions on this sys data source table. Uh, you need to be in global scope to do this. And just gives us a minute to load. What you're doing is you're going over to the access application access tab and you're clicking these other checkboxes can create, can update, can delete. Um, and you're clicking save, right? I'll go back to my guided setup, and then you mark that as complete. The next one is about configuring data access uh, for your scheduled data for this um, scheduled import set table. And actually, it's just really, this is just confirming that all these permissions have been set. Um, and you just come back out, got it set up, and you mark as complete. Now, I will be going back to my scope to change the scope to be in the SSCM scope. The service graph connector is just saying they're there at the bottom. And then you go down to the next step. This is important. This is to do with um, setting up the connection. And it brings me into um, the Workflow Studio. So if I click on New Connection, it should be over here, Integrations. I go to Integrations. And I see here I find my, I'm deciding, I, I'm using, in this case, I'm not using integration authentication. I'm using um, the, the, the out of the box JDBC connection credentials. I'm clicking on configure. And this actually is my host, right? So I actually been filling this in before. So what you do is you put in your SCCM host, you put in your database name, you put in then your username. In our case, this is this one. And then you put in, the password, I have this saved over here. 
you put in your the password for your your user. Your configure connection. And you've got all your details in there. Okay, and then get back out to guide to setup. And then just mark that as complete. This step is just if you use an integrated authentication. We're not in our case, so I'm not going to be doing that. Then you go down to the next step is, this is where you configure your data source and schedule data imports. And just click on the first step here. This actually is important. Um, here you, you specify a prefix, right? That what's going to be happening is um, a new set of data sources specific to you, your customer, you could call them your customer specific data sources and da scheduled data imports will be created. That will be separate from the out of the box data source and scheduled data imports that come in. OK, so here what you're doing is, for example, at the moment, you know, you, let's say you're in the US, you put in a USA prefix or in the future, you may have um, a data source in Europe. So you could put in some like EUR for Europe, to, 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 so it would allow you to distinguish between the data, the data, the SCCM data source in Europe versus the US. Um, so that's that one there. Then you select the in the if I search for JDBC, you select this credentials record that just got created in the previous step. Then a mid server. You just to call out, it's important actually that you populate this mid server field. You you will already have needed to set up a mid server before you start doing your SCM setup uh, because it communicates through a mid server. Okay, you can leave that field. So then if I just click, uh, click on create update imports, okay, so you see here it created. Um, the scheduled data imports with this USA prefix before the name, and then likewise with the data sources themselves. Okay. And go back to guided setup. Uh, yeah, to mark that as good as I've been going through this, uh, mark that as complete as well. So that's just been done. Then the next thing is you're configuring connection properties. And what you see here is this new record has been created specific for your instance uh, with this USA name, right? And um, the first tab here shows the connection properties associated with your connection. And Randy, would you like to speak for a few minutes to this asset tag? Hey, thanks, Anne-Marie. So this service graph connection property is for the service graph connection USA. It is enabling, so it, when it is set to true, it comes default false. When it is set to true, it enables the mapping of the asset tag from the Microsoft SCCM to the asset tag attribute on the computer table. Okay, let's click back out again. Get to guided setup. Sometimes it's nearly easier just to type in setup. Just to, it's a nearly faster way of getting back to where you want to be. And as you can see here, this is where I was. It's 50%. Actually, I should have marked that as complete as well. And this brings me back to where I was. So we've done, we've, we set our property asset tag to true, right? Then the, the next step here is validating the data sources. So you go into the parent um, import set job that was created, or data source, I should say. Uh, this is a computer identity data source, and this is considered the parent, if you like, to where the goes are all children. Um, and you click on test load. Now, if you notice here, before I click on this, its last runtime is, is empty. Okay, when you run a job, in SCC, the, the, the SCCM job, and I have this turned on, use last runtime date. This is used, let's say, for every day the job runs, and it'll, it'll only go forward, it'll only pick up changes since the first run. So new records are changed records. So the first time you run the job, it's going to bring in all your records. Um, because 
last run date is empty. When I run, when I click on test load records, it will populate this last run date because at the end of a run, it populates it. And the next step I'll be showing you after this, you'll be clearing out that last run date because you want to make sure the first time you run your SCM job to bring in all the records. But I'm going to click on test um, load records. Test load 20 records. And it's running. Great. And we can see success. So that's all good. And I just go back to set up again. Looking at where it was. And I marked this as complete. I need to mark that as complete as well. And then here, this is important to actually reset last runtime in the test load data source. What they're telling you to do here is you need to clear this last run date field. This is important. So that when you the first time you run the job, it'll bring in all the records. Okay, because I what I found with some customers is that their their um last scan date is, is the, the most is out of sync. Sometimes it's 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 not getting updated. It, a lot of the problems around that is because the uh, computer job didn't bring in all the records because of this was turned out this this field was populated, but the, the, the child jobs have. And then it's, it, it, it makes things out of sync. Just go back to set up again. That's some great information. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. I, and some of this, thanks, Randy. Some of the service, customer service, um, customer reviews I've done, this has come up a, a, a time and time again has been a problem. So that's why I just want to spend a few minutes talking about that. The mark is complete. Excellent. Yeah. Some, something, that's, something for them to take a look at. A exactly. That. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so, Randy, did you want to take a few minutes to talk to this one, configure this data imports? Thanks, Anne-Marie. Yeah, it's simple. This integration, uh, this plugin system property allows the integration with the SCCM uh, in ServiceNow. It allows SCCM to manage the disk uh, and the information that's coming back from um, the computers. Uh, this value is by default set as false, we recommend setting it to true. Okay. Um, so I'm just, I, I, I didn't want to change it. So I'm marking that as complete because I like, to, I actually like to see, um, you know, what SCCM does with the disk record versus what discovery does. But a lot of customers would like to use because discovery is a single source of truth. So they'd turn that to true then in that case. Uh, setting up schedule date. We're getting close to the end now at this stage. Um, so this is about the setting up schedule date imports. What this is all about is really you're you're, you're picking your computer identity parent uh, schedule date import job. You're making it active, right? Uh, you can change, you know, when the job runs. The default is that um, this is the time here. It shows every daily at this you know time, but you can change that to a different time if you want. And you just save that. And I'm just going to click on execute now, starts the job, right? And I will go, I'm going to check that in, 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 a, in, a, in a bit, but before I do, I just want to show, um, just mark this as complete, right? thing there. I wanted to do mark is complete, but let me get back out. Mark's complete. And this other step is for people who are on legacy scheduled data imports. Um, you are basically just going through this and you're deselecting the actor checkbox on there on those legacy jobs. Don't want to spend too much time with that. I do want to spend a few minutes on the last piece here, which is on customized instance data source SQL statement. If I click on configure. And if you notice here, this is the input instance record, we call it, that got created with the prefix you specified. It's like your SCCM instance record. I'm clicking that to open it up. And what you see here is it shows the data sources that were created with your prefix and um, the prime, the original data source, right? So that you, you know, it, that that's, this is customer specific. Now, if, if for some reason you want to change the SQL associated with one of these jobs where you put in the custom SQL statement is in here in this field. 
right? You don't go and change it in the data source itself because what happens is that at the end of the scheduled input job, it, it um, at the beginning of the scheduled input job, it, it, it looks, it comes into the speed here, it pulls the SQL that's in here and it uses that for the run. So if for some reason you, you try and make the change in the, even the customer specific um, data source that you created, it'll just be ignored and it'll just use the out of the box one. That's, I've seen that with a customer, they were trying to understand why is it not taking my changes? That's why, because you need to put it in here, right? Um, that, that's important. Um, so the last thing I'll just show is the concurrent import sets. Sets. Okay, so if I do a refresh in this, yeah, okay. It's down at the bottom, I see it there. I'm actually, you can see here, this is the job that I started. And it should show something. And it shows that it's been processed. Okay. And then it'll continue on. I won't show this for the rest of the video, but it'll continue on running the child jobs after this one. Okay, so that that's it for me, Randy, if you wanted to. Go back to sharing your screen to, to go back to the, the last few slides. Thank you so much. Yep. So everybody uh, uh, for the, uh, being here today in the video, if you need some more information around setting up the white papers, uh, setting up service graph connector, we have a white paper out there in the community as well as uh, the ServiceNow docs have have a couple of papers there as well. You could find that information on the ServiceNow docs web. Thank you very much.